Well, God bless all of you. This is Charlie Champ here, and I want to welcome you to this broadcast. This is going to be a powerful time of prayer for you, as well as I'm going to be teaching um, on healing and um, really pinpointing some areas for you that you need to be uh, keenly aware of when it comes to uh, the ministry of healing as well as receiving healing for your physical body. I want to tell you that this is the finest hour of the church. In fact, God is moving in a mighty, mighty way. And um, I have some of the uh, prayer requests uh, concerning strictly the virus of uh, the coronavirus. And we've been praying over these. And so if you've sent in your uh, prayer request, um, we are praying over it. And, uh, you know, obviously, anything that you need prayer for, you can contact the ministry at prayer at destinyencounters.com or info at destinyencounters.com. And uh, we will be praying for any of your needs. Anything that you have need of, we're praying for. And uh, we're honing in specifically on the coronavirus. And we've been seeing uh, tremendous testimonies coming in of people being healed. God touching them, as well as people that were uh, a little concerned about uh, getting tested, and they got tested. They were per asking for prayer that they wouldn't uh, have the virus, and and the the test results came back negative. And we're just rejoicing in the miracle presence and power of Jesus to drive out sickness. And uh, so today we are going to um, dive into this teaching. I'm going to talk to you about uh, healing and um, what you, all the aspects of healing and, and what uh, the Bible teaches us about healing. And we'll touch a little bit on um, my thoughts on the coronavirus, but this is going to be a broadcast just for you. So you're going to want to definitely share this with all of your friends, all those that are your followers here on Facebook or on uh, YouTube, whichever you're watching, and uh, let them know, hey, Charlie's teaching on healing today. And aggressively, I'm going to teach on healing um, because there's a lot of misconceptions about um, what God does with healing, what, um, you know, uh, even, uh, even concerning judgment, if this is God's judgment, and I'll get into a little bit of that uh, through the Word of God. But let me know where you're tuned in from, what state, what uh, city, what nation you're watching us from. You know, we have people from all over the world that are tuning into these broadcasts, and we just love you so much, and we're praying for you. In fact, this morning, around 2.30, uh, the Lord just woke me up out of a dead sleep, and i and, uh, just been praying, prayed all through from... Uh, 2.30, well into um, when the sun came up, and uh, we believe that uh, this is an hour of breakthrough. We believe that this is an hour where God's church is going to shine bright, and He's going to use you. Um, I want to admonish many of you uh, to pray for people, pray for the sick, uh, pray for those that are in fear. You know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And um, we are the army of the Lord. We should not be hibernating, cooked up, afraid of catching some kind of virus. You know, uh, the saints, the, you know, I, I, I grew up, uh, you know, old time Pentecost. And uh, we used to, they used to talk about catching the Holy Ghost. You know, now you got millennial preachers talking about catching viruses. And I'm like, I, I don't know um, what your heritage is. But my heritage is full of faith and power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We don't catch disease. Uh, we're full of the Holy Ghost and power to drive out sickness. In fact, Paul said, I didn't come with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit, so that your faith would not rest in my words, but in the words of God. And so we're not resting on man's human intellect. We're not, we're not resting on... Um, you know, what man has to say concerning the virus. We're resting on what the Word of God says and faith in 
uh, the miraculous to deliver us from every form of sickness and disease. And uh, I would really encourage many of you, and I know some of you are turning, you know, off the news, off all the, all the stuff, you know, and focus in. If you're going to be quarantined in your house, you can't go anywhere, get into the Word of God. Get into the Scripture. Get into prayer. Get into the spirit realm. And um, I want to let all of our partners know that I'm going to be going live on our partner page after this. And um, I'm going to be teaching on the mountain of the Lord. Some things that the Lord had recently shown me. Some real in-depth teaching for you. So immediately after this, jump on to the partner page and uh, get uh, on Facebook and um, tune into that broadcast. Because we're going to touch on a totally different subject matter. Um, and it's going to be very, very powerful for you. And speaking of healing, speaking of God releasing a miracle army in this hour, um, many of you know that we are going to be doing an open air crusade in the month of September in Chicago, Illinois. And we've secured the park that we're going to be doing it at. We're working on all the, uh, how we're going to be facilitating that. But, um, for those that um, are uh, really, you, you're, you're a radical believer. You love Jesus with all your heart. You believe in miracles. You believe in healing. You believe in laying hands on the sick, casting out devils and raising the dead. I want to invite you in the month of September to come to the, to the city of Chicago and help us, boots on the ground, in the streets, uh, uh, in evangelism, winning the lost, praying for the sick, and uh, we're going to have um, a week-long event right there in Little Village, and uh, we're renting out the park. Uh, we're going to be doing an open-air crusade the same way that we would do it, whether we were in, you know, in, in uh, the continent of Africa or the nation of India or Pakistan, you know, South America, the same format. Uh, that we use in our international crusades, uh, we are now bridging them into the United States because the Lord spoke specifically to Brent and I that this is a decade for harvest in America. And so uh, the city of Chicago and specifically the, that uh, district of uh, Little Village, we are going to bombard that with the gospel. And so I'm believing God for hundreds of you to join me on the streets, winning the lost and, and casting out demons, uh, winning people to the Lord in, in, in the groves. And I'm telling you, this is uh, the greatest hour that we can see uh, America shaken with revival. And my focus, more than anything, is on the present now move of the Holy Spirit. You know, God has not changed His mind one single bit about revival. He is just looking for someone willing to step up and say, God, I'm ready. You know, um, one revivalist said he would set himself on fire so that people come and watch him burn. You know, the Lord is looking for people that will set themselves ablaze so that those that are lost will watch them burn. The Bible says that we are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are a light to the world. We are literally the menorah of God. We are a tabernacle filled and flooded with God. And the, the world is sitting in darkness waiting for that great shining light and the church is that beacon of hope, that beacon of light to release people out of chains of bondage, darkness, disease, sickness, and death. And uh, the presence of God is going to invade in the month of September in the city of Chicago. And I'm hoping that, th that hundreds of you will come out and help us win souls and see a mighty, mighty harvest in that city. Now... I want to get into this teaching today. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 8, verses uh, 16 and 17. And again, we're going to deal with um, the avenue of healing. And I'm going to be very aggressive. You know, over the last 20 years, 
Um, I've studied on healing, miracles, and seen some all every miracle that you can imagine um, transpire from the healing of AIDS to casting out of demons to uh, you know people being resurrected. I mean, we've seen a lot. And, um, you know, God's Word never changes. The Bible says that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we have to be secure in what we believe. And um, I almost find it so, um, how do I say this? And uh, Well, I don't want to be politically correct when I say this. You have to be completely brain dead to believe, and spiritually dead, to believe that this coronavirus in particular is the judgment of God. And if you believe that, you believe that this is the sovereign judgment of God, then why on earth would you pray against it or pray that it would stop if it is the sovereignty of God that is bringing judgment? I, the same people that are saying this is the judgment of God are the same people that are saying that we should pray that it would, 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 would leave. My friend, if it's the sovereignty of God that God is judging, particularly America, then why are you even praying? The fact that you are saying that we should pray contradicts the very teaching of the judgment of God. Because if it is the sovereign judgment of God, then why are you praying against it? I'm going to be very bold in saying this, that I have yet to see a single person that believes that sickness and disease, uh, you know, that it's the judgment of God, actually move in any power at all. And in fact, I, I, I would suggest to you that you go and try to find one single clip of any miracle that someone that preaches the judgment of God has done through the, hand, through the, through the anointing. Because you can't preach out of the both sides of your mouth and you can't mix light with darkness. And today we're going to get into this teaching. And we're going to recognize fully that healing is the children's bread, that God is not casting judgment and destruction on one hand, and on the other hand, He'll bring healing. No, my friend, it's evident through the Scripture, the Word of God, and we're going to get into it, that healing is from the Lord, and that sickness is from the devil. It's like, you know, the preacher uh, once said, uh, you, know, you know, when you go to um, Sunday school as a child, uh, you learn, you know, better theology than you do at uh, some seminary, I mean, uh, you know, some seminary that uh, is full uh, of dead men's bones. The devil is bad and God is good. There is no in-between. And so um, I refuse to back off of this. I'm not going to stop preaching and I don't care who likes it and who, who, who doesn't like it. Because when you're sent from God you, and you've been chosen by the Lord and you've been placed in a generation you have to stand up for what the Bible says. And I'm not going to go along with anybody's opinion. I don't care how, how popular or unpopular they are. The Bible is the same. The Word of God is the same. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came to give life and life more abundantly. And so we need to understand that sickness and disease is not from the Lord and that God is not striking the earth with judgment, but that God has raised up His church in this hour to drive out the demonic forces. The Bible says again, 
that for this reason Jesus Christ was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. My friend, sickness and disease is of the devil. Now, you should be in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all, uh, you should circle that word, all, that were sick. Well, Brother Charlie, do you believe that all can be healed? Well, does the Bible say that all can be healed? Did Jesus heal all? Well, yes, Brother Charlie, but that was Jesus. Well, then what was Acts 10.38 says that God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The same anointing that Jesus operated in is the same anointing that He's given to His church. And so the results are not dependent upon uh, a hit and miss. The results are dependent upon the Word of God and what we believe. I taught this on the, on the last time we were together, that if we're hoping and believing that somebody will have faith for healing, we're going to have a hit and a miss. But if we recognize that we've been commissioned by God, then we know that we have jurisdiction and delegated authority to deal with sickness and disease. That's the difference between someone that's wondering and somebody that's actually anointed. If you're still wondering if you're, if you're, called, to he, if you're called to heal or if God does heal, you should probably sit down and find another uh, occupation because ministry is not for you. If you think that God is still trying to you know, uh, judge people through sickness and disease, His Word and He healed all that were, that were sick that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Now, in this particular scripture uh, passage, we recognize that both healing and deliverance typically flow together. That wherever we see the move of healing, we also, in turn, will see deliverance. And a lot of times, uh, the root of sickness and disease is demonic. And, and, and it's not always that way. But in many cases, there um, are those times where there's a root uh, uh, of demonic manifestation that is causing the sickness to transpire in the person's physical body. And so you'll see, uh, even with a woman who had a spirit of infirmity, who the Bible says the devil bowed her over, it doesn't say that she uh, had a back pain. It says that she had a spirit of infirmity. And so there was a demonic presence behind the sickness that was causing her to be bent over and in torment. Now, one of the privileges of being a citizen of the kingdom of God is divine healing. And in fact, it is your, um, it is your uh, uh, privilege as a believer to walk in everyday healing. You should not be full of sickness and disease. You should not be tormented by demonic powers. You should walk in health, wholeness, and healing all the days of your life. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You should be living righteously, flowing out of your new creation. You should be in peace at all times, no matter what is going on around you. And you should have joy in the midst of circumstance. The Bible doesn't say that you're not going to suffer persecution or that you're not going to be tempted of the devil. But the Lord says, and the Word of God says, that He will make a way out of every temptation, every uh, persecution.
God will make a way out. And as you, as you go through, the presence of God is with you. Power of God, and you shouldn't lose your joy in the midst of anything. But God has given to His church that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Listen, if you're just tuning into this, you should share the broadcast right now. And I think I'm going to come on and um, do just a broadcast where I pray for people instead of just doing a post where I, uh, you know, I'll be awake. Yeah, maybe I'll just come on and just start praying for people and pray for all of your, your needs. Um, you know, obviously this is a teaching right now. And I'm teaching on healing. Now, let's deal with the origin of sickness and affliction. Because when God created us, everything that He made, including man, the Bible says in Genesis 1.31, was very good. You weren't formed, man was not formed with sickness and disease. Man was not formed with the thought in mind that he would be afflicted. In fact, the Bible says that man was made in the nature of God. And in God's nature, there is no sickness. So the origin of man was formed in health, healing, and wholeness. The origin of darkness is sin, sickness, and affliction. Man does not have sickness and disease until after the fall because he had the nature of God. The first man, therefore, had the genes of God, which meant he was, uh, he had no genetic disease. You know, I got a, a, a book that's going to be coming out in the month of July that's going to be dealing right along these lines of uh, your new creation DNA. You're going to want to get a hold of that. But man was formed with the nature of God and had no genetic disease because God's nature, there is no sickness. The fall of man in Genesis 3 is the place where we see spiritual death, Genesis 3.10. And later, Genesis 3.19, we see physical death. Man wasn't even meant to die. He wasn't, he wasn't formed in the place of death. And the Bible says that the last thing that's going to be put under is death. Hallelujah. And in Deuteronomy, now I, I want you to write these scriptures down because during this week, uh, I want you to med meditate, go back on some of these things that we're talking about. And I would suggest to you, now I can't tell you what to do, but if, you, if, you know, if you're following the ministry, I, I would just suggest to you that you don't mix teachings that are demonically inspired by people that are telling you that this is the judgment of God, that God brings sickness and affliction to teach people things uh, with what we're teaching here today. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so you have to study out the scripture for yourself. And when you come to the conclusion that God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil, then you're going to automatically stop following things that have no anointing on them whatsoever. Now the Bible regards sickness as a curse. Deuteronomy 28, 21 through 61, we see it laid out very specifically that sickness is regarded as a curse. And in Job 2, 7 and 8, we see that the affliction came directly from Satan. Directly from Satan. 
And several Bible passages tell us that there was a connection between sickness and the satanic word. One, one of those passages is in Matthew 9.33 where, where uh, you could plainly see that there was demonic influence uh, with, with, uh, with this sickness that was upon the person. Now, another interesting thing is in Luke chapter 3, verse 35, when Jesus encounters a demon, he rebukes the demon and then in Luke 4, 39, when dealing with Peter's mother who had, who had a fever, he rebuked the fever. And that's one of the things that we've been doing with the coronavirus. As we've been uh, having people emailing us about the symptoms. And one of the symptoms is the fever. A fever. And so... We know that through the scripture in Luke 4.39 and Luke 3.35 that if Jesus in one passage rebukes a demon and then several passages later rebukes a fever that he understood that underneath, hidden, underlaying that fever was a demonic power. And that's why I know without a shadow of a doubt that this coronavirus is a demonic power that is coming against many people on the earth. And God has called His church, He's called you and I to stand up and rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. Now, you can't rebuke something that is lifeless. You don't rebuke something that is not alive. Jesus wasn't speaking to a lifeless thing in Peter's mother. My friend, he was speaking to a demonic power that was resting behind that woman's sickness. And he spoke and he rebuked the fever and immediately the Bible says that she was made whole. When we rebuke a condition, you are speaking to the power behind the condition. You know, I've had it where people uh, was driving out a demon out of, um, out of a woman uh, once in the United States and the family got super upset they said you can't talk to my mother that way you know I was rebuking this demon out of this woman she was manifesting throwing up all over the carpet and um, full-blown deliverance and they said you can't talk to my mother that way <clears throat> I said I'm not talking to your mother that way I said that's a demon that I'm speaking to. And that devil wants to kill your mother. Now you need to sit down and be quiet and let me drive this demon out of your mom or this demon is going to kill her. See, we need to stop patty caking and being seeker sensitive and, and, and just, oh, you know, you don't have to be that extreme. You don't have to be, uh, you know, that's the way they used to do it back back then, you know, uh, we're not in the days of A.A. A. Allen and Jack Coe and the healing revivalists. We're, we're in the 21st century and God's given us a new strategy to speak softly. My friend, let me tell you something. You can tell me how to get results when you actually get some. Because when it comes to studying out the, the, the ministry of healing, I'm going to take my P's and Q's from generals who walk in delivering power like Lester Summerall, Smith Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, Dowie. I'm going to take my P's and Q's from people that move in miracle power and not from some person that has no results whatsoever that stand behind a, uh, you know, some desk and, and, and is afraid to, to shake somebody's hand because they're going to get sick. 
Guys, we got to get bold about what we believe. And you know, they're going to call, they'll say, well, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. Well, good, because the foolishness, the things that are foolish to the world, that's the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is revealed through those that walk boldly in the Word of God and don't compromise. Hallelujah. You have to speak to the demonic influence. It's just the same way when I, you know, when I speak to people, I don't even speak to their physical body, their natural man, their brain. I'm speaking spirit to spirit because the real person is their spirit. That's why you can discern things that are behind people. You know, there's a very low discernment in the body of Christ. Thank God that people are waking up to the realm of discernment. Because you don't speak to people in their natural brain, their mind, their human intellect. When you're communicating with someone, you're communicating spirit to spirit. That's how you can instantly know where someone is living at. You can instantly know where, whether they're living in light or darkness. Because we speak to their spirit. Oh, I'm fired up today. I'm thinking about doing a 13-day healing school every single day. And, and people that need miracles, you know, they have to come and just sit for 13 solid days and listen to teaching on, on the miraculous. And then we'll, 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 we'll see, we'll pray for them and see what kind of results we get. Because a lot of the things, the reason people can't receive their miracles is because some of the teaching that they've received. Well, Brother Charlie, you know this cancer, uh, brother, brother so-and-so told me that it's teaching me something. Well, did Brother so-and-so pray for you? Well, you know, he told me that in God's timing, you know. Well, you know, uh, 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 do you want to live or die? Well, I want to live, Brother Charlie, but you know, this is, you know, brother, uh, brother uh, so-and-so, uh, uh, apostle, doodad told me that this is, um, you know, God's teaching me something through uh, this, this uh, cancer that I have. Well, then if God's teaching you something, why am I praying for you? Well, Brother Charlie, I wanted to get your opinion. Well, my opinion is, is that that thing has got to leave your body. <clears throat> it's a foreign entity that's living in you, and I'll pray for you, and I'll believe God that God is going to heal you completely, and that thing is going to be driven out of your physical body. Do you want me to pray for you? Yes, Brother Charlie. You know, and, and, and you go through the list, and the travel all over the world, and the thing is, is always the same. Because people want to live, they don't want to die. They don't, they don't care what apostle, uh, you know, doodad said to them. They want it, they're like getting a, trying to get a second opinion. Well, maybe, you know, there'll be somebody that will agree with me uh, for this cancer to leave. Because I certainly don't believe I've done anything to justify me dying. And I would, say, and I would, <laughs> I would agree. God does not want you to die. He wants you to live and declare the works of the Lord. Now, let's talk about God's compassion. 1 Peter. Wow, Brother Charlie's all on fire today. Well, you know, things are being, things that I always knew are being confirmed. So I think it's time for us to get bolder in our actions. And I'll pray until every bit of natural energy is out of my physical body. And people know that. I've spent hours praying for pray and prayer lines for people. Why? Because I believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in the deliverance power of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is resting in the church to release His divine power upon every single person that needs it in Jesus name. 1 Peter 2:24. 1 Peter 2:24. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. Mm. By whose stripes ye were healed. Ye were healed. Ye 
were healed, past tense. Now, let's look at Exodus also, Exodus Exodus 15. If you're getting something out of this, you should share the broadcast. Exodus 15. And remember, partners, I'm going live right after this on our partner page, and I'm going to be talking about uh, living out of, the, out of the mountain of the Lord's house. Whew. It's going to be good. So jump on there after I'm done teaching on this. Um, Exodus 15, 6, uh, 26. And he said, If thou wilt digitally hark, diligently hearken to, my vo to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, that was, that was, that was the old covenant. Just imagine. Go back to 1 Peter again. That was the old covenant. And in and, and, and if God was willing to do that under an old covenant, now that He has bore our sins in His own body upon the tree, that we being dead to sin should live to righteousness. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're born again. You're serving the Lord. You're walking with God. You're living out of your righteousness. By his stripes, you were healed. So by reason of his great mercy towards us, God procured our healing up front even before you were born. Everyone underneath the sound of my voice, Jesus went to the cross before you were ever born to bring about healing. Your healing has already been paid for. A sickness in the body can never glorify God because God paid for healing and restoration. And it's His desire that our bodies remain healthy and, and full of healing. Jesus told the leper that He was willing to heal. Mark 1 verse 41. So He is more than willing to heal and deliver us today. Listen, what would you do? You know, I, I saw somebody put up a, fa a Facebook post, and I laughed so hard when I saw it. Um, it was about, I wonder what Jesus would do uh, about praying for those that had leprosy. If He wouldn't lay His hands on them because He was afraid of getting leprosy. You know, I've been into hospitals where the whole hospital was nothing was filled with nothing but leprosy. It didn't even cross my mind that if I lay my hand on that person that has leprosy that I'm going to get leprosy. You want to know why? Because I've renewed my mind to the point to where I recognize what the word of God says that my hands are not full of sickness and disease so that when I lay hands on somebody they catch it. No, my hands are full of healing because Jesus lives on the inside of me. He lives on the inside of you. He lives on the, on, on the inside of every born again believer. And it is always God's will to heal and deliver no matter what the case is. Leprosy being one of the worst cases, Jesus said, I'm willing that you would be healed. Mark 1, 41. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me. Turn there. Turn there with Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, 
to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then Acts. I've quoted this already, but I want your eyes on the Scripture today. Acts 10.38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So, all sickness and disease is oppression from the devil according to Acts 10.38. And Jesus Christ was anointed by God through the Holy Spirit and power, the same Holy Spirit that you've been given, the same power that we can receive, and God was with him. And if you're walking with God, God is with you as well. And God anointed Jesus specifically to heal the sick and deliver the oppressed according to these two scriptures. It's undeniable. It doesn't matter what theological perspective you come from. You have to be, you have to be completely blind religiously not to see these two passages of scripture plainly reveal that the reason that Jesus came was not just so that he would hang on a tree. He would, that, he would just, that he would hang on a tree, resurrect and go, go, go to the throne, rest on the throne, just so that you will go to heaven someday. Otherwise, Jesus would not have went about performing the miraculous and then tell his disciples that these works you're going to do and even greater. Why? Why greater? Well, because Jesus only had three and a half years to do those miracles. But the disciples went out and began to do miracles. And, and you say, well, those were the apostles, the great apostles. Well, what about the 70 in Luke 10? And we went over in, in, in Luke 10 and in Matthew 10. Jesus gave them not even dunamis power. He gave them exousia power. They went just off the word of God, not even the indwelling of the presence of Jesus. And we, according to uh, Colossians 1.27, now have Christ in us, the hope of glory. And Paul said, I'm not frustrating that grace. In verse 29, he said, I'm not going to frustrate the grace of the superhuman energy. The, the energia is the Greek word, the energy of God that is expressing that power out of me. I'm not going to frustrate that grace. I'm going to live out of that grace. That's the kind of grace that I want to live in. Lord, the energy and the superhuman power of God is flowing out of me. Mm, this is so good, and we haven't even got all the way through this. You should share this and keep on sharing and share, share, share all day, because sharing is caring. Jesus himself has delegated that same power to the church. Through us, he still does Healing and miracles today. Now write these scriptures down. Matthew 8, 16 through 17, Luke 10, verse 19, and John 14, verse 12. John 14, 12. Let's look at that because I just quoted that and I want you um, to see these scriptures because it's so important in the hour that we live in to drive out all doubt and unbelief concerning the scripture. There's such a variety of opinion on social media. My friend, some things, uh, uh, you know, some people preach fake news. Not good news. They're preaching to you fake news. Turn it off. Stop listening to it. Recognize who you are in Christ. Stand up as a bold believer and say, I'm not going to listen to this fake news anymore. I'm only listening to the good news. And I'm go only going to listen to those that are getting results. Look at this. Wow, Brother Charlie, you're bold. Yep, that's where we're living now. John 14, 12. Verily, very sent to you, he that believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Can't get any more, 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 uh, Blame than that. Look at that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight. You know, I got a new Bible here. I've been going through it. 
Um, I'm going to highlight that. I like that scripture. 14.12 Verily I say unto you that believes in me, the works that, he, that I do shall he also do. He didn't say, um, you know, the apostles are going to do. He didn't say the 70 are going to do. He said everyone that believes in me, he's going to do these works. Because I'm going to my Father. See, that's the issue, is that people that talk about, you know, that the last power of God went away with the apostles. Well, what do you do with John 14, 12? And Jesus went away and he took his power with him. And now we have the Bible. My friend, how are you going to challenge darkness? People talk about Father, Son, and Holy Bible. And they, and they go, well, we got the Word of God now. Well, you don't even believe the Word. Because if you believed it, you would believe this scripture that says that when Jesus went to His Father, that you're going to work and operate in greater works. Now, let's talk about methods of divine healing. Methods of divine healing. And write these scriptures down. 2 Kings 5, uh, 10. That's where Naaman went and washed in the river. John 9, 6. This is where Jesus spit on the ground, formed clay, and threw it on the blind man, on his eyes. Acts 5, 15. This is where Peter's shadow healed the sick. Peter's shadow healed the sick. And in fact, when you look at, the, um, when you look at that passage, you can get um, an in-depth in, 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 in insight into the fact that it wasn't just that he was walking down the street and his shadow was passing over people and they were being healed, but that there was an overshadowing and that an epikinezo of the presence of God, the same word overshadow there is the same word uh, that uh, the angel when speaking to Mary said the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and, the, and it, you will uh, give birth to Emmanuel, God with us. It's the same word. This is the, the kind of power that Peter was demonstrating that there was an overshadowing or canopy of the Holy Spirit that was resting upon his very shadow. And so the region that he was in was, was sick, sickness free, it's a demonic free zone. Acts 19 12, Paul's handkerchiefs. Notice Paul was sweating, all kinds of sweat maybe uh, you know who knows what was all on those handkerchiefs in the natural but we know in the spirit that the power of God was resting upon them because when they took those handkerchiefs to those that were sick and infirmed and demonically possessed as soon as the handkerchief entered into the room the demons began to cry out That's some power. That's some power, my friends. So what are some methods that we use today? Write this down. Simple. Laying on of hands. Matthew 16, uh, verse 18. Laying on of hands. Those that lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Not a maybe, not a might. They shall recover. They're going to recover. Call for the elders to anoint you with oil. James 5, 14. And the prayer of agreement. So, the laying on of hands, anointing with oil. The prayer of agreement. James 4, verse 15. Through faith in God and in the name of Jesus. Now, when I speak about in the name of Jesus, as I said in my previous teaching, we're not talking about just 
you know, standing in a position of outside of Christ, saying, in the name of Jesus, you're going to have to listen. No, it's stepping actually into the name of God. It's actually stepping into the name of Jesus that gets results. So, let's deal with the sovereignty issue, the sovereignty of God. Well, the sovereignty of, of God, brother, the sovereignty. Okay, let's deal with the sovereignty of God. We do remember that God is sovereign. So, therefore, His... 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 <laughs> Woo, I feel the presence of God. He is not limited by method. If He is sovereign, you say, well, brother, are you sovereign? Okay, He is sovereign. I agree with you. And therefore, His methods are not limited to the things that I just spoke of. In fact, sometimes Jesus just spoke the word and they were healed. He anointed them, but He did some weird things. He spat on the ground and took clay and put it on the man's eyes that were blind and He received His sight. Again, interesting ways. God is sovereign, correct? His, ma you can't, his methods vary. So we know through the Word of God that there are certain things that happen and results that we get when we lay hands, when we anoint with oil, when we have the prayer of agreement, when we pray in faith. When we step into the name of Jesus, we know all those things. But because God is sovereign, sometimes the spoken word, and I've, I've had it many, many, many times, where even people that are watching the broadcast, like you're watching today, they, they'll ask for prayer, or they'll send in their prayer request, and we're praying here in Moravian Falls at the Eagle's Nest, and we'll release that prayer. They may not even hear that prayer, but the word of God goes forth, and He heals so God is sovereign, so His limits are not, He's not limited by a method. That's why we see Peter's shadow healing the sick. That's why we see Paul's uh, handkerchiefs from his body healing the sick. That's why Elisha told Naaman, he said, go dip in the river. My friend, I've been to meetings before. I was in a meeting in South Africa in a church. And we were doing, a, you know, a miracle pool at Spirit Word. And the, the, the angel came, stirred the waters. People walked through the water. We were praying for him through the water as the water was being stirred, just like in John chapter 5. And we saw four cripples get out of wheelchairs. We saw people in dementia, their mind coming back. We saw miracle, excuse me, miracle after miracle, after miracle, after miracle. It's not the method. It's the man. His name is Jesus. We just have to be willing to step into that unlimited power of God and believe that He is able. He is able. Wow, I wish I could get an amen today. I hope you're enjoying this. If you're enjoying this right now, I want you to type in amen. Brother Charlie, we're with you. Uh, we're standing in agreement with you. I like to know who's with me. You know, we know, we know those that are, that, that, that are against us, but you know, the Bible says that there are far more that are with us than that are against us. Yeah, you'll get that one or two comments, bro, your, Brother Charlie, uh, this is heresy, you, you know, uh, uh, brother, this is not of God, you're, 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 you're not of the Lord. You get those one or two comments, but the overwhelming majority of people that are watching this right now completely in agreement. It's just like, you know, one or two religious deadheads that, uh, that uh, you know, they want to make their voices heard. And uh, we need to get much more bold. And we got to start just driving the anointing into the darkness. Driving light. You know, I've never seen darkness dominate light. Light naturally dominates darkness. 
And you got to drive it out by the power of God. Because let me tell you, friends, when the world is looking for help, they're not going to come to those people. They're going to come to you and me. And we're going to have to have an anointing that can answer their situation. We can't sit back and say, well, we'll, we'll just trust God. No, we got to be so inundated by the Word of God. We have to be so brainwashed by the Word. We have to let the Word of God wash our minds to the, to the degree where nothing can challenge the faith of God that we're walking in. And I would suggest to you anything that's trying to challenge your faith, that you cut that thing off and you feed your spirit more and more of what God has to say. Amen. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you in a moment. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. Now let's talk about preparation for divine healing. And I got into uh, this a little bit on the last teaching that we did. And uh, we discussed whether people need to have faith to believe for their miracle or if I'm commissioned to release healing. And I brought out that teaching on recognizing that you're an ambassador, you're commissioned by Christ to release healing in the earth. You've been authorized with an authentic anointing straight from the throne of heaven. And when you come into that revelation, you're going to get greater results than just having to have the person hopefully believe and agree. God wants to upgrade you. But if you are believing for healing and you're in preparation, you're saying, God, I, I, I need healing. Here are some things. Number one, search your heart. What do you believe concerning healing? If you need healing, what do you believe concerning it? If you're in between like this and you're going, I, I don't know, get into the Word of God. Drive out the doubt. Drive it out. Search your heart. Say, God, this is what I believe, but I need to go back and search the Scripture. Especially if you're dealing with life and death. Don't sit back and say, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. No. When you're fighting for your life, say you have six months to live. You have a year to live. You have, you have a, a limited time to, to live. Or your parent or loved one has a limit. Listen, you don't have time to sit there and go, que sera, sera, whatever it be. God, if you want me to live, I'm going to live. No, the Bible says you will live and declare the works of the Lord. Per search your heart. If there's any, uh, next, if there's any sin in your life, anything that you can think of, acknowledge it. Repent of it. Get it out of your life. Next, forgive anyone that has offended you. If there's an offense, I've seen where, where an offense was actually harboring, was causing sickness and disease to harbor inside of a person's body. And through word of knowledge, I said, you know, you need to forgive this person. And as soon as they did, they were instantly healed by the presence of God. Next, break any form of alliance that you have with the demonic realm. This goes back again to searching your heart and looking to see, well, what do I believe concerning healing? Is that a false teaching? Is that a doctrine of demons that I'm believing? Is, is that teaching that God is using sickness and disease? That can't, that's not God. That's a, that's a doctrine of, uh, uh, of demons that Paul spoke about. i got to break my alliance with that. If there is any ties that you have, to your past, maybe you operated in the occult, maybe you're still moving in some kind of form of witchcraft, you're, 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 de you're, 
you're dabbling in, in forms of sorcery. You know, I was in um, Massachusetts. Uh, <laughs> I was in Massachusetts when they, when they shut down the meetings. And, you know, they said only a limited amount of people were allowed in the meetings. We, we did meetings anyways. Thank God for men of God that don't shut down the meetings. I was with, uh, with uh, <laughs> my buddy up in Massachusetts. And uh, he, he was like, no, we're going for it. We're not shutting the meetings down. Thank God. Thank God. Man. Thank God for men of God that said, no, we're not going to shut the meeting down. We're not going against the wall of the Lord. We're holding these meetings. People need the miracles. And there was a woman that was dealing with, um, you know, uh, dabbling in sorcery. I got it through a word of knowledge. I said, you're dabbling in sorcery and witchcraft and, and you're dealing with voices in your head and you need to get up here <clears throat> and um, get set free. And uh, after several minutes, the woman came up, power of God hit her, she got set free and um, that thing was driven out. Uh, but you got to break all ties with the occult. And if you're practicing any form of occultism, you know, any form of witchcraft, you got to drive that thing out. What does fellowship, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. Thank you, Jesus. Ask God to cleanse your body, soul, and your spirit with the blood of Jesus. This brings us into the place of taking communion. What do you believe about communion? I'll touch on that briefly. And I deal with this in my, in, in my, my book that I have, and it's going to be coming soon. Uh, what do you believe about healing? And what do you believe about communion and, and the sacrament? Uh, of the body and the blood of Jesus. What do you believe about the Eucharist? What do you believe about that bread and that wine? Or, you know, if you're a Pentecostal, you're Welch's grape juice. What do you believe about that? And from what position are you taking it from? You know, I've met so many Pentecostals, believers, and charismatic believers that take their communion from the reflection of the cross and Jesus hanging on the cross. That's actually a wrong perspective and a wrong point uh, to, 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 to place your faith in. You're not you should not take it from the perspective of Jesus on the cross. You should take it from the perspective of Jesus on the throne. The communion should be taken not from the cross perspective, but from the resurrection of Jesus. Because when you take His body and His blood from the, from the perspective of resurrection in the throne, you're taking it from the perspective of it is truly finished. Because He is resurrected. And therefore, what you're taking into you is not a symbol and a type and a and you know symbology when you're taking that communion you are participating in the body and the blood of Christ and therefore you're taking into yourself wholeness healing and you're bringing yourself into connection with in, with unity and fellowship with Jesus and I could get into some of the really deep material of some of what the Eastern Orthodox Church teaches on the Eucharist and communion because there is a union that takes place when you take that communion. Now that's all I'm going to teach on that. If you want you know, more on that, you can come to one of our mystical prayer schools and I may teach on that in the fall or you could, I teach on a little bit on my, my upcoming book that I got coming out. Uh, invite the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Some, some believers, they, uh, you know, I've seen it where non-believers and believers alike that haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, that when they get filled with the Holy Spirit, that pain leaves them. 
that sickness leaves them. Whatever they were <clears throat> ailed with, that leaves them. And, uh, and, and um, as they're filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, the power of God touches them, and that sickness is driven out. So, God wants to deliver us. He wants to heal us. There's no, nowhere, there's nowhere in the Word of God in New Testament theology and scripture that God is using sickness to teach us a single thing. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy, but God came to give us life and life more abundantly. God wants to give you life today. He wants you to live an abundant life full of health, healing, wholeness. And when you go to heaven, you should just be like Wigglesworth. Where, you know, I've been to the church where Wigglesworth went into the, into the back room, put his hands on his chin, and went to heaven. No sickness in his body whatsoever. He just knew that it was time for him to go. go. Dr. Lester Summerall, he had a journal that sat beside of his bed every day, for, and he would, he would write down the things that he was to get done for the Lord. God would give him things. And he would he would get those he would write those down, and every day he would after the day, he would mark them off. God, and the next day God would give him new tasks to do. And one morning he woke up, and he didn't get anything from the Lord. And uh, three weeks later, I believe he went home to be with Jesus. He said, "Well, my mission is done." His last book that he wrote was. Uh, it was something like uh, something about the earth. It was good. It, it was good knowing you, or something. It was something. It, that was his last book. It's like his last book was something to do with uh, uh, goodbye, planet Earth. It was nice, nice meeting you, or something like that. Like the guy knew when he, when it, when it was when he was done. You know, uh, Kenneth Hagen, Brother Hagen. I, I, I've heard stories where he. He ate breakfast that morning, and then, you know, he just sat in a chair and just went to heaven. Many men of God, you know, many powerful men of God went to heaven without sickness, disease. They just, just went. It was their time to go. And that's what I believe for you. That's what I believe for me. I believe that we're going to finish the task that God has for us. And when that day has come, if we're not caught up in that rapture, we're not caught up in that glorious return of Jesus, and we're not, we, you know, we're not like Enoch where we vanish. Like, and, and you know, there's been men of God like Sadhu Sundar Singh, contemporary of Smith Wigglesworth. God caught up, never came back, never came back. And why not believe for that? Why believe that you, as you get older, you're gonna, your eyes are gonna go dim, and you're gonna. And you just fall into a sickness and die. No, Caleb said at 80 years old, he said, I'm strong as I was when I was a young man. Give me this mountain. Some of you need to get a hold of the spirit like Caleb and say, I'm taking my mountain. You need to be like Moses where his eyes didn't go dim. My friend, that's an old covenant believer. That's not even a New Testament Christian. We got to get bold about what we believe about healing. Because the bolder we are, the greater results we're going to get. The greater results we're going to get, the bolder that we get. And God is looking for uh, our hands to lay hands on the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to reveal the kingdom of God on the earth. This is what we've been called to. And if this is the hour where many are saying this is a reset for the church. Jesus, let it be a reset. Let it be a complete restoration of the mind of what we believe about healing, about miracles, about the glory of God. Let it be a complete reset. Because this is the time in this decade, in these coming years, the things, the challenges that we're going to face are going to have to be answered by authentic power. 
You can't fake it until you make it anymore. People are going to recognize who's truly carrying power and who is just talking. That's why Paul said, I'm going to come and I'm going to see about these guys that are talking and we're going to see who's really carrying power. That's the hour that we are now living in again, where people are going to really recognize who's walking in authentic power and who's just talking. And I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited and I believe that God is raising up an army <clears throat> right now, you and I, to take the nations for God, to take America for God, to take your nation for God. Boldness is the key. Boldness is the key. God's wanting us to live out of heavenly places, bring that which is in heaven down into the earth. The anointing, the glory, the presence, the authority, the faith of God. That's what we've been called to. We've been called to live out of this book. And there's always going to be, you know, people that want to try to say what they say. Let the scoffer scoff. Because the results are undeniable. The fruit is undeniable. And this is the greatest hour. In fact, some of you that are watching me, you should get bold and just go, go door to door. You know, everybody's at home anyways. They're sitting around right now. You know, we've had people from uh, the cable, cable and the electric company and all these people come to, our, come to our house and, you know, check on different things and see if we want to upgrade in this and upgrade in that. They're going door to door because they know everybody's at home. Man, wouldn't it be awesome if some Christians got out on the streets, knocked door to door and said, hey, do you need healing? Do you need, are you afraid? Are you... Are you in fear? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Can we pray for you? This is God's finest hour for the church. Whoo, I feel the anointing right now. God wants to release us. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, if you are listening to this, as I'm praying for you, I want you to type in amen in an agreement. Power of God's going to come on you. There's a fresh anointing falling right now. Psalm 92.10 says that God will anoint you with fresh oil. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person underneath the sound of my voice. Lord, let the anointing begin to flow right now. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I break off the spirit of fear. I release power and I supercharge their spirit right now with the anointing supercharge their spirit man with the power of God supercharge their physical body in the area where they need healing now in the name of Jesus Christ father thank you for release of the power and the spirit of love Lord let compassion the compassion of Jesus come upon all those that are listening to me. And Lord, bring them into a soundness of mind concerning what has been taught today. Let every word that was released, let it go into their spirit. Not one word fall to the ground. Not one thing fall to the ground that has been spoken here today in the name of Jesus. Let every seed go into soil that will produce in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the army of the Lord is rising. I decree and declare a radical belief, a radical faith, a radical anointing coming upon every one of those that are watching this in the name of Jesus Christ. Fresh anointing upon you now. Boldness upon you now. Anointing in the name of Jesus coming upon you from the top of your head right through the soles of your feet. I rebuke every symptom of coronavirus in any person that's listening now in Jesus' mighty name. I break off fear now that you're contaminated with that virus and I release the anointing upon you to drive it out now in Jesus' mighty name. 
name. Fire on your physical body. Lord Jesus, every form of sickness and disease, I command it out of these people's bodies now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke schizophrenia, demonic powers, and voices in the name of Jesus. Get out of their life now. I command soundness, wholeness, and faith to fill them in the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost, fill you now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Lord, I thank you for your presence invading their family, invading their life. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation. God, open up the understanding of the call of God upon them now. Lord, release miracle workers in this hour across the nations. Father, we pray for the different nations that are being affected now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I ask you to raise up miracles miracle workers in those countries that they will step boldly onto the streets and begin to proclaim the gospel. We break off fear. We break off intimidation and we release boldness now in the name of Jesus. Whoo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Katoruba Shandalabasa Rupa ke telebristi ni asto mananama ki telebesti ando le mandoro stana ma sondo la makata. You're gonna lay hands on the sick. They're going to recover. The lame are going to walk. The blind are going to see. The demon possessed are going to be set free. Every deadly disease is going to bow its knee to the name of Jesus Christ in this finest hour. Holy Ghost, arise, arise in your people. Holy Ghost, arise, arise on your church. Supercharge those intercessors with the power to command sickness and disease and that spirit of coronavirus out of their region, out of their city, out of their district, out of their nation, in the name of Jesus. We pray for breakthrough now. We pray for divine breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Potorubastaka. Ho. Ho. Sapandelebristikovra. Tu stapandro vustondo. Something supernatural is transpiring right now. Kandrusti melemekistia. Rupa tonama stanama komrati stenamasto. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Pandros to mangandalemesti alam rastu pitia. Ringe to mastanama to we're bringing our petitions boldly before the Lord, before the throne of grace. Lord, you're releasing in this hour a mighty deluge of your power and your glory. Who fire of the Holy Ghost. Take your church again into the upper room of your presence. Release the power upon us like you did in Acts 4. I see a mighty shaking coming. Prando Rushtinganamastonemeti in the United States. Sepoton de lemesti leneme condristia. A mighty shakening. Kusta, but the church will not be shaken. The church will not be moved. Hombangandrushtinemesti. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but the church will not be shaken. It will be established upon the firm rock in which we stand. Stand. That's standing upon the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We will not be removed and we will not be moved. Oh, we will stand in this hour. We will straighten our parambo tushte kiria stalamato. We will straighten pandole vrekete every crooked place. Oh, bandele vestiana. Mekondorushta and every desert spot that is not produced and is died out. Oh, will be flourishing abundantly. As the outpouring of the Holy Ghost infills 
and metusta briketelamasto falls in a melo mosto la marca tampon different cities priste kiria tol about different sanctuary cities the lord says there shall be in this hour those houses paton that have been built upon the rock and they will not be moved they will be houses sanctuary houses cities that are set on the hill where many will come into and they will find healing in this hour mingo rupa stand in with uplifted hands they will worship god unabashful on unafraid and the fire of god will fill them to go out into the whole earth and preach the gospel and perform the miraculous patonde de viste kala zondo rustine na masto brafondo rufa tikistene pandrukatista palo voste de matia la masta and this in which they have called the pa- pandemic ho oh, pati will be trampled underneath the church's foot in this hour as the intercessors arise ha ketiste and they come both and they come boldly before the throne of grace says the lord so shall this pandemic fall to the ground and be wiped from the earth and remembered no more for coronavirus shall not be crowned but i shall be crowned says the lord as king of glory over this earth ho oh, my word has went out from my voice paton le viste kia posatana have my prophets not prophesied have they not decreed have they not declared that this virus shall come to nothing have they not said that it shall fall to the ground for it shall come is it even as came it shall go patun be killed upon the power of my spirit will be magnified through my church my presence patomiki will fill houses will fill all oh, those that walk uprightly and righteously before me and they say they shall be those flames those fires those ones that carry my glory out of this upper room of confinement says the lord for this has been a setup this has been a setup says the lord even a momentary rest oh to reset my church for you'll come out with boldness those that are fasting those that are praying those that are seeking oh those that are watching oh the news the fakeness the falsified information oh the false witness the false of the false prophets speak and try to consume the earth with the words no the lord says for those that have rested in my presence underneath the shadow of my wings shall receive the crown of abundant life the crown of righteousness the crown of glory and my tony the crown of glory is that which is set upon the heads of those believers that rested in acts chapter 2 for there is another upper room that is taking place right now in the realm of the spirit with my ecclesia and they shall come forth with a fresh anointing in the sour to demonstrate signs and wonders and miracles think it not by chance that this is an hour where the land is at rest for something shall transpire an overflow an outpouring of my presence that will not be consumed even in the four walls of the church for it is the hour where it will spill out into the streets into the highways and the byways and you will compel them to come in for it will be the greatest manifestation it will be the greatest awakening the earth has ever seen for those that are resting in their ho- homes are resting awake some are awake in fear others have been awakened to the possibility and the potential of the power of my presence that rests ho ho in my throne room monde betiste na masto come in now church into the place of rest come in now behind the veil and receive new instructions new 
new and fresh anointings upon you, for this is the time of refreshing, a time of renewal and restoration. Think it not a time to live in fear, for I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. For this is your finest hour. You will be released after, and you will see my blessing, my glory, my outpouring fall upon those who did not bow their knee to Baal, did not bow their knee to the things of religion and tradition, but stood up boldly for the things of God. My presence and power rest upon them to perform the miraculous and see great outpourings. For they will not just be one, but there will be multiplied many across the earth. Fires, upper rooms, power being released upon my church, my bride. It's your finest hour. Receive it now. Thank you, Jesus. Shukatele Messiah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, we love you so much. Uh, I'm praying for you. We're praying for you. We know what God is saying. Wow, what a powerful, what a powerful prophetic word, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just give God. I, I know you're watching me from wherever you're watching me. You should share the broadcast. Just let's worship God for a moment. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your, what your word says. We thank you for your prophetic utterance, God. We thank you for all that you're doing this hour. Lord, we thank you for your church. We bless, we bless your church in Jesus' name. Listen, guys, uh, I'm going to go live on um, our partner page after this. You're going to have to give me a, um, a, just a little while before I go live. Um, listen, I want to invite you to come again uh, with us to Chicago in the month of September. We're hitting the streets. People have been messaging, asking, are you still doing Chicago? I haven't changed a thing on my schedule. Not a thing. Not a thing. We only had to push back our April conference, and that's because our guests couldn't get visas to come into the country. Otherwise, we would be having it in April. I wouldn't even change it. There's no, there's no thing, there's nothing that's going to stop us from moving forward in the things of God. Not, nothing, nothing. Uh, I love you guys. Listen, if you feel inclined, there's a, um, you feel that this teaching helped you, you feel empowered, you feel like God is, is speaking, uh, there is a link uh, in the description box of the video you can sew. Uh, in the, and, and listen, we're raising money for the crusade in Chicago, and uh, we have other crusades this year. We're believing God for other things that are in the works right now. Uh, if you feel uh, to connect with us and give, so God bless you. Thank you so much for sewing. And then um, if you want to become a partner of Destiny Encounters, please pray, prayfully consider that. We love all of our partners and and, um, you know, you're, you're a part of our, you know, a special family. Um, you know, we just love our partners and our friends and those that are around the world that are, that are in connection with us. Um, guys, I love you. Remember, we'll send your prayer requests in. We're getting a hold of those. We're praying for you in this finest hour of the church. And um, we'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.